Controversy has arisen over the treatment of employees by popular YouTube creator Darman. Some actors who they clarified as being contractors, not full employees, affiliated with his production company, Darman Studios, they've taken to TikTok to express their grievances with the studio, including low pay and mistreatment by management. Now, despite his international success as a YouTuber and entrepreneur who posts four weekly short films on moral issues, Darman was reportedly unresponsive to actors' requests for a meeting. As a result, some actors who spoke out were even terminated, and this caused an uproar on social media. Charles Laughlin, one of the actors, used his Instagram story to bring attention to the whole situation. There are a lot of reasons why we're protesting, but the main one being we asked for a meeting with Dar because we were unhappy with the way we were being treated here at Darman Studios. Ultimately, we were told we would not get that meeting. And it seems by and large that the internet community is supporting the actors and calling for change in the entire industry. An actor by the name of Colin Borden, who's well known for his role in Darman's videos, has recently used TikTok to address the working conditions at the studio. As an actor at Darman Studios, I am just a contract player. I have no employment there. I am just sort of called every now and then as are all the other actors. And it just is not sustainable. Um, and there are a lot of issues at hand here, but uh, one of the main issues is that not a single actor that works at Diamond Studios can afford rent. But with situations like this, there's always two sides to the story and the truth is usually somewhere in the middle. I am an actress at Darman Studios, so I cannot stay silent and watch this studio and this beautiful platform that has made a difference for so many people get thrown under the bus and have everyone assuming that we all feel that way. Because we don't. I don't. And many actors don't. And I don't think I'm in the, like, minority. There's something called the silent majority. But listen, if it was as bad as, as some of these people are saying it is, if it was really that bad and the general consensus was, this is a horrible, wretched place to work, then the actors wouldn't still be showing up. Darman finally responded directly to the actors who have been protesting against him, but it's still not what the actors were hoping for. Colin A. Borden is part of the whole hashtag protest Darman movement, and it's gained a whole lot of attention across social media for questioning the business practices of Darman and the workplace culture at his studio. If you don't respect us, like we're gonna show, show up and we're gonna show you that we need business. While there were some regular actors, such as Catherine Norland, who shared positive experience with Darman Studios, there are many other actors who continue to protest. Darman eventually, though, responded to the protest in a full Instagram post on February 14th, 2023. He stated that the protesters' desire to meet with him personally was never actually communicated. He also refuted the allegations of low wages, calling them 100% not true and claimed that his studio currently pays between $33 to $44 per hour for speaking roles. Darman also made allegations against some of the protesting actors stating that the hashtag protest Darman movement is filled with a whole lot of misinformation. While acknowledging the need for improvement, Darman himself wrote on Instagram that he was taking steps to stop the spread of misinformation and coming up with ways to improve the studio, such as implementing a more efficient booking system, as well as stronger communication and more consistent hours and pay. It remains to be seen whether or not his response is gonna be enough to fully satisfy the concerns of the actors, as well as fans who are curious about how's this whole thing gonna go down. Is Darman actually evil or is he just the product of a very broken system? We're not just telling stories, we're changing lives. But here's the thing, Darman Studios is now under fire for treatment of their workers. Like one of the studio's actors, Colin A. Borden, he explained that many of the actors, including some that have been around since the creation of Darman Studios for years, they were severely underpaid. And also in some cases, Darman was actively creating a very unsafe, toxic working environment 
for his actors. And when actors did bring up these concerns, many of them were fired and that created a culture of suppression. Darman Studios, they responded to these claims by stating that workers were getting paid up to $44 an hour for speaking roles. However, many of the actors, they're not full-time employees, but they do contract work. These actors, they get sent contracts where they do not know how many hours that they're gonna be working or when they're gonna be working. So as a result, these actors, they could just be working and acting for only three hours, but hey, they had to book off those other days because they may have been needed by Darman Studios, which then they lose out on other acting opportunities that they could have accepted. Now, Darman Studios, is just a microcosm of a problem in the industry. And unfortunately, this is just the reality of the system that enables people to do this. Not everything in the system is 100% fair for everybody. And a lot of people have brought up complaints that, well, Darman, it's not like he's a starving studio. His net worth is actually $260 million. So he definitely could afford to compensate his actors more, maybe even in bonuses. We can only hope that this is the start of a lasting positive change for everyone in the entertainment industry. Mira Mulroney is one of the most vocal actors in the protest Darman movement. She has made her voice known that changes definitely need to be made at the studio. She's also made a series of comedic videos where she pokes at Darman and also some of the things that Darman has been doing. She kind of just has been exposing all of that stuff to the public. You know how you know that a company is most likely guilty of everything that you've accused them of is when they deflect and protect as opposed to trying to remedy the situation. Jazza Nicolette made a video where she talked about a very traumatic experience that she had at Darman Studios on a video shoot, specifically with Darman himself. There was an incident that occurred while I was doing a TikTok video with Darman himself. And it was around Halloween time, so he was supposed to be chasing me with a weapon. There was a security guard on set, and Dar was asking what weapon should I use. I was assuming that it was going to be a not real weapon. We have prop weapons on set. There should never be real weapons on set. But he turns to the security guard. The security guard gives him a real knife and points the knife at me. And I immediately was shocked and paralyzed, didn't know what to do. Pretty traumatic experience still sits with her today and she gets really emotional, which is definitely understandable because when you're in a situation like that, you really don't know what to expect sometimes and you go into that fight or flight mode. Actor Chaz Lachlan was also one of the first actors to protest against Darman publicly. And he made a video speaking about the actors not being able to have a meeting with Darman, even though they asked for a meeting. We asked for a meeting with Dar because we were unhappy with the way we were being treated here at Darman Studios. Ultimately, we were told we would not get that meeting. We have decided to gather and protest. Let's take a look at some of the actors that have gotten fired for various reasons and take a look and see how many of them you recognize. Dar men fired these amazing actors. I'm not gonna get into all the details as to why they were fired, but in many cases, they say that it had to do with reasons that are just pretty shady. Nathan Ng, I believe, was the first actor that kind of just exposed how the scheduling at Darman Studios worked. So if you guys didn't know, they say they pay their actors $18 if you're background or $33 to $44 if you're a speaking role. Now, this may seem like a lot of money, but this is an hourly rate. Actors need to get paid a day rate. And let me tell you why this is so important and also why this is a lot less money than you think. So the way you sign a contract and the way you get a role in Darman is a, is a little bit weird. They will tell you that you're needed for an X amount of days. Let's just say for this example, five. They won't tell you what role it is. They, you don't even have any idea what the script is. And in order to figure out what the role is or what the script is, you have to sign the contract. So you sign the contract just to find out that you are a character in this story that has three lines. You just committed five days for them, right? And you're only gonna be needed for, let's say, two. 
And in those two days, because it's an hourly rate with a day commitment, let's say you're only needed for two hours that day. So I get paid the rate of $33 an hour, let's say two hours a day, I make $132. Now when other opportunities, when other projects come up, I have to turn them down because I have no idea what those days are gonna be for filming, for my, my part. So in those five days, I made $132. Nick Sarando is also another actor that has been very vocal on social media. Now in his video, he does reference Catherine Norland's video. Catherine goes there, she's number one, and she's highly favored, by the way. 145 videos compared to the next person, Sean Tang 92. That's, there's a big gap there, right? So she's already a favorited person. And she was one of the actors who first publicly defended Darman on social media. Now, Catherine's video, it's actually like 45 minutes long, but here is a snippet of what she had to say. So I cannot stay silent and watch this studio on this beautiful platform that has made a difference for so many people get thrown under the bus. Listen, if it was as bad as, as some of these people are saying it is, then the actors wouldn't still be showing up. Callie Jane is one of the actors that aren't local and she explains an experience of actually losing money working at Darman Studios. Every video that I made, I was losing money making it. We had to buy and provide our own wardrobe for every single video. I don't live in LA. I live a couple hours away from LA. The money I made went right back into paying for my own hotel, which is not cheap, and paying for gas, which is certainly not cheap. Why did I keep doing it? I love to act. And my concern about money with gas and hoteling was, was brought up. I was never asked to come back again. Dylan Harris is an actor who is just completely torn. It's like there's a lot of things that he loves at Darman Studios. And at the same time, he sides with the actors because he understands what they may have gone through, but he still really wants to see change. Darman has not been scaling his actor's pay as he has become a multi, multi, multi-millionaire. It is a gift to be able to do what we do. Not to mention all of the exposure that we gain from it. I'm personally doing my best to capitalize on this exposure and build my own brand, so I'm torn. Actor Colin A. Borden was the one that like really got the ball rolling in the protest against Darman. One of the main issues is that not a single actor that works at Darman Studios can afford rent. He's also one of the fan favorite actors at Darman Studios, and who knows if he's gonna continue working with the studios or not. But there are still quite a bit of actors that are standing side by side with Darman, even though pretty much all of the other actors are protesting against him. Darman just posted this video basically addressing the drama and showing all the actors that still stand with him despite the drama. This actor claims that Darman treated him very nicely the whole time that he worked with him. So that actor there that he just showed was Melvin Ward and he's still acting with Darman, but he actually does say that actors should definitely get paid more. Do I feel there should be like an increase in pay? Yes, 100%. 100%. Also, I did check out some of the comments online and many people think that, well, Melvin is just kind of holding back, not really saying what he really feels about Darman and the whole situation because he just doesn't want to get fired. This actor claims that her and her daughter were always treated nice by Darman on set. He also shared this on his story and this. He then ended it by showing a bunch of younger actors having fun while on set for Darman. Also another actor, Shantae Massard, she came to the defense of Darman. She's not having all of this protest and rallying against Darman. There are some of us who are hurt and sad and angry and I was glad that they were finally being seen and heard and I was in support of us all getting what it is that we deserve but now it's gotten ugly and it seems to me to have become about revenge. And that's distracting us all from the main thing, which is changing lives. For a lot of viewers and people commenting, they're saying that that sounded pretty scripted. Speaking of scripted replies, Catherine Norland, she's probably the most popular actor who has defended Darman. She's also been accused of the same thing, being scripted and just speaking good things because she's scared to get fired. Unfortunately, it's popular in this day and age to wanna cancel someone if you're upset, to, you know, we see, sometimes we see someone who's successful and we think, oh, they must be stepping on people to get there. And it's hard for business owners. They're taking on all the risk. They're taking on all the responsibility and it all falls on them. And some employees feel like they're not getting what they deserve. 
They could try to turn everything upside down for you, and I believe he's doing the best he can. But another actor, Nick Sarando, who is an actor that's protesting against Darman, says that Catherine Norlin is actually a highly favored actor by Darman Studios, so no wonder she's defending him. Catherine goes there, she's number one, and she's highly favored, by the way. 145 videos compared to the next person, Sean Tang 92. That's there's a big gap there, right? So she's already a favorited person. Who knows exactly when this whole situation is gonna be resolved? I really think that one of the reasons why this escalated to the point where actors are actually protesting against Darman was for the fact that Darman isn't a starving studio. If Darman was still working on becoming profitable and just struggling and just trying to get by and growing, then I think the actors would understand more. But Darman is a multi, 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 multi million and still many other actors can't afford rent. And without a guaranteed schedule, it's really hard for them to plan their lives and other work projects around Darman bookings. But then on the other side, there are people that are saying, well, actors, that just comes with the territory. If you don't like the contract and the working agreement, then go act somewhere else. It's unfair to treat the people who have helped you build such a huge brand with such disrespect. I stand in solidarity with all of my protesting OG uh, Darman actors. Let's look at Jaslyn Nicolette. So she posted a video on TikTok and in her original video, she spoke about an incident on set with Darman directly where a real knife was pointed at her by Darman, which she didn't expect at all. But he turns to the security guard. The security guard gives him a real knife and points the knife at me. And I immediately was shocked. Then, in a later video, she said that Darman didn't actually point the knife at her, although there was a real knife on set that she didn't know about. Mr. Man did not point or pull a knife on me on set. Although there was a knife on set that wasn't previously discussed. Thank you. The two stories don't line up. Those are two completely different things. So either she's being forced to retract her statement or she straight up lied about the whole incident. And if that's the case, then that would be pretty messed up. And I do understand actors protesting against unfair wages and scheduling issues, as well as other things in the workplace culture that just need to really be changed. But making up stories like this, you know, that just wouldn't be cool. Also, Jaslyn Nicolette's comments has led some some people to doubt some of the claims that are made by some of the actors that are protesting against Darman. But then again, there was this one content creator, Noah Glenn Carter, who received a copyright claim that got one of his videos removed. Well, apparently Darman is not a fan of my coverage because he copyright claimed this video I did on him. And as you can see right here, the claim was made by Darman himself. It's a completely false copyright claim and I'm sure the only reason he wanted the video taken down was because he didn't like it. It's really hard to tell if it's one of those auto copyright claims that happen a lot or whether Darman specifically is going around targeting videos and getting them removed just because he doesn't like them or believes that it's spreading some false information about him, which could then lead people to feel pressured to retract statements like Jaslyn Nicolette, especially if they are threatened with legal actions and points the knife at me mr man did not point or pull a knife on me another one of darman's actors giovanna vidal she made a video protesting darman and she shared some pretty surprising info about what actors are expected to do when they get casted we have to get our wardrobe selected we don't have a wardrobe stylist um we have to sometimes purchase wardrobe if our character requires something that we don't have in our closet so of course those costs would add up real quick especially when you're not reimbursed for those out-of-pocket expenses. The next actor is Briani Walker. She was another actor who got fired because she had a medical condition, but she did state an apology towards Darman in the video that she posted. I first want to start off with an apology to Darman for calling him Frogman, but I'll be explaining to you guys why I called him that. First off, the whole production team knew that I had a medical condition to where my face swells up, I get hives all over my body, my tongue swells up and my lips swell up where I have to use an EpiPen or be rushed to the hospital. Without this, I can die. I even take daily medication because of this. Darman is aware of this. The reason I call Darman Frogman is because it was all over social media since 2014 that he was a fraud. He was defrauding people out of their money and he never kept his word with us. He was labeled as fraud and he's a man. So I said fraud man. 
I was I had a bad allergic reaction. So when I came to set, the director noticed that I was a little off. I felt that I was going to be fired. And I told them that. And I was crying and everything. And Shantae told me that, oh, nothing's going to happen. It's going to be okay. He isn't going to fire you or anything. But after that, I was never hired back again. Another one of the protesting actors, Ricky Yvette Westmoreland, provided an update on the darn man situation. And she's an actor that is literally an OG, like the first darn man actor from years ago. Since the very first cinematic video. Yep, I've been rocking since day one. And as the first actor ever hired on the cinematic videos that you all watch today, many of you know that my four year journey there has now come to an end. In her video, she brings a pretty interesting perspective on the value that Darman's actors actually contributed to Darman's success. What have we done for Dar? We've done everything. We've, we've helped bring his stories to life. We sacrificed our time, our talents, our energy, our families, our other pro other jobs, other projects. We've essentially given him millions of dollars worth of talent. There's also Rachel Christensen, who's been very vocal. She is another prominent actor that shed some light on having her concerns being completely ignored by Darman Studios in a video that she made with fellow Darman actor, Mayor Mulroney. The suggestions are made. They're, they are submitted. Nothing has changed. I'm talking down to no locks on the women's bathroom after I have repeatedly been like, hey, by the way, just so you guys know, there's no lock on this bathroom. Hasn't been changed. Um, scheduling issues that multiple actors have brought up that the way they schedule is not professional um, and needs to be changed. Nothing has changed. So yes, do they take the feedback? Sure. Do they do anything about it? No. Nope. So with all of this, it's definitely hard to determine exactly what is 100% true here, being an outsider looking in. But there are still a whole lot of common experiences that are voiced by actors that really just don't seem to be coincidences. Nathan Ng is a Darman actor who's been protesting as well. He shares some really surprising behind the scene information about his experience at Darman Studios. This whole Darman thing may seem a little bit wonky and may come out of nowhere but i've seen it coming from a mile away if y'all haven't noticed i haven't been part of his projects for quite some time and the reason for that may shock you nathan ing was probably one of the first actors to really explain how the scheduling at darman studios worked once you get casted and he showed that even though the actors are paid between 33 dollars an hour to 44 dollars an hour that doesn't actually translate to an amount of money that's worth it for the actors. $33 an hour, let's say two hours a day, I make $132, but I have to book out, I had to book out five different days for them. Now, when other opportunities, when other projects come up, I have to turn them down because I have no idea what those days are gonna be for filming, for my, my part. So in those five days, I made $132. At the end of that video, he does say that this actually says a lot more about the industry than it does about Darman himself, but it's definitely something that Darman exploits for sure. Kind of also says more about the industry than it does about Darman but he definitely exploits it. And that's why a lot of actors are angry. In Nathan Ng's second video titled, Why Keep Working With Darn Man Then? Why I Left Part Two, he answers a huge question that some of the actors like Catherine Norlin, who are defending Darn Man, have posed. And that question is, well, if working with Darn Man is so bad in the first place, why keep on showing up to work for him then. In the video, Nathan goes on to say that he kept working with Darn Man mainly because like it was a very toxic relationship. And he also says that there's a whole lot of victim shaming going on by Darn Man. And when you're in a situation like this, it's definitely really hard sometimes to see a different perspective until you step out of it. So he didn't even realize how toxic this working relationship was when he was working with Darn Man. Why I kept working with him. And the short answer is, because it was a toxic relationship. Now, if y'all have ever been in a toxic relationship, you'll understand that it's way harder to leave than you, you would think, even though in your head, you know it's bad for you. Another big reason for him staying was the cast and the crew, as well as there was an expectation laid out by Darman that you'll become a regular series actor and you'll grow with the company. So what actor wouldn't wanna act be a part of something bigger and grow with a company. Darman sets his expectation that once you're a series regular, you'll be invited back and back and back again in order to do more films for him. But as soon as you don't work with his schedule, as soon as something in your life comes up, or as soon as you just have any concerns, you're gone. 
Of course, in the film industry, there are tight deadlines and it's not always possible to work out scheduling in a way that you would like. But when you don't feel like you can say anything about that, then that can be a pretty intense and scary situation to be in. As well as the constant fear of being replaced, that's definitely a legitimate concern too. For Nathan's third video titled, Why Don't I See You in Darman Anymore? Why I Left Part 3, he goes into a whole lot more details of what specifically led him to no longer work with Darman. It was definitely a mixture of things, but the event that he describes in the video was the straw that broke the camel's back, as that expression goes. This was by far the worst experience I've had on any set, and it was a Darman set. In fact, this incident was so terrible that it actually caused my working relationship with Darman Studios to end. I was replaced, and then I was unfortunately ghosted. Director, I love this guy and I just want to say that his style just didn't really fit Darman Studios. He's very meticulous. Every time something messed up the take, we would take it back from the beginning, which is not very normal in film. You just kind of go back from where you messed up and just kept going. Number two, Darman Studios is located right next to a freaking airport. So every two to three minutes, the planes would fly over and ruin the take and we have to take it back from the beginning. Number three, accident. But the biggest accident that happened on the set was the waiter. There's a scene where he delivers green juice and he accidentally spills it on me. We have to wait for my clothes to dry. We come back one to two hours later and he spills it again. And then when he went through this whole difficult situation on set, he was ghosted and then blamed for everything. A very trustworthy source at Darman Studios told me that they pinned all these delays on me just to save their own asses. To Darman's credit, none of this was directly his fault. But how he handled the situation afterwards was. And pinning everything on me, ghosting me, and then replacing me is not the answer. I think we all know that not every day at any job will go 100% perfect. And it sounds like Nathan Ng and other Darman actors who are protesting definitely understand that. And they are willing to work through sometimes difficult days on set. Where I think everything really collapses though is when the actors don't feel at all like they're being heard or that they even matter when it comes to solving workplace issues or resolving any of their concerns. Nathan actually said it perfectly in his second video. There are so many actors out there that are sharing their experiences, but instead of addressing our concerns, he's telling us that we're wrong for having them. He's attempting to gaslight us and the audience into thinking that, well, the concerns that these actors are having are crazy and they're crazy for having them. AKA victim shaming. And honestly guys, at this point, it doesn't seem like Darn Man will be addressing the concerns of the actors in a way that will make them feel heard. Although he has responded, it was more so reasons and justifications rather than dealing with their concerns. So my thought is that with millions of fans and viewers still supporting him, Darn Man will keep on going business as usual and wait for these protests to just die down.